Assalamu alaikum and a very pleasant day to the panel of juries. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Norazia Ismail from College Theatre and I'm to co Raman Putra, Sabah Bernam Slango. My action research is entitled Empowering Low Frequency Words Using WW5 to Enhance Oral Communication of Six Master Two Muet Sharia. My target is 15 energetic students from Six Master Two Muet Sharia class with SPM English results ranging from Grade B to D. In Muet, the most anxiety provoking component is the speaking component. The first major concern is the topics are too outspread, varying from economy to environment, which students have to be well versed on. To make it more challenging, it has infinite subtopics, and Moet does not have any spot questions, which means that students need to be knowledgeable of all the topics. The second concern is the speaking test, where students are put in an unrehearsed situation with a short preparation time. There will be also the cross topics questions, which I am worried about is putting them in that sport might cause a total shutdown due to anxiety, thus putting them in a silent mode. In the previous teaching, I had very high expectations towards my students. I assumed that all my students already possessed enough vocabulary. Hence, I had no proper method for effective vocabulary enrichment and my lessons were basically exam-oriented. As for the students, during the listening, writing and reading lessons, they were really lively. However, the personality changed once speaking lesson was conducted. They would look anxious, they would hold hands, they sometimes hid behind their friends or hid their faces behind books and they would avoid eye contact if I were to ask them any questions. When they answered the speaking questions, their answers were monotonous, bland, shallow answers which discussed only the surface of the topics. Most of the students were seen groping for words. They were waiting for the right words which never came. Finally, they would opt for mother tongue language, hoping I would translate it for them. I'm now going to show an authentic video from before the intervention of what I meant by unsuccessful groping for words. I believe is the statement, uh, but, uh, but uh, I also improve your life. Uh, the point is, uh, uh, we can listen uh, we can listen from senior citizen. Senior citizen. Uh, senior citizen can talk uh, more values such as to be a good person and pious. 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 At this point, we could see that the message could not be conveyed due to lack of correct vocabulary, too many hesitations and noisy pauses. He tried to use the word pious but failed because of the incorrect pronunciation of pious, as Hammer cited in 1991. If language structures make up the skeleton of the language, then it is the vocabulary that provides the vital organs and flesh. Henceforth, I knew something prompt had to be done. I immediately conducted a survey, interviews and gave my students a questionnaire. Once the data was collected, I derived to a conclusion that the students lacked vocabulary, which has brought about the failure to convey messages. At this point, I don't wait any further. I focused my lesson in empowering the students with accelerated amount of low frequency words to tackle the problems in speaking. My general objective was to empower the 15 students of 6th semester to Muet Sharia with adequate amounts of LFW to confidently express themselves explicitly across various topics in a variety of communicative purposes. I had three specific objectives in mind for the 15 students from 6 Muet Sharia in conducting the WW5 intervention. Number one was to increase their ability in expressing opinions explicitly using at least three LFW. Number two was to boost the confidence level in communicative ability. And number three was to enable the 15 students to achieve band three and four in Muet speaking component after acquiring adequate LFW in WW5 intervention.
What are the low frequency words in English? Low frequency words in the second language learning are labelled as the unknown words because they are rarely used due to the difficult pronunciation, syllables and spelling. Here are some examples of low frequency words. Procrastinate is the low frequency words for delay, concur for agree and abominable for bad. Many asked, why did I choose low frequency words instead of common words? My main reason was because we are moving towards the common European framework aligned word and the second reason was because it was one of the requirements in the speaking assessment criteria. As you can see here, for band 3 and 4, candidates need to use appropriate and varied vocabulary moderately well for band 3 and satisfactorily for band 4. A website is also prepared for teachers to determine the specific level of vocabulary, which is www.englishprofile.org. For example, if I wanted to know which level the word assemble fits in, I just need to type the word and it will show that assemble belongs to C2 level or Ben 6. Therefore, I have to make sure that instead of using the word build, my students should be encouraged to use the word assemble. Knowing my trajectory in my lesson, I immediately planned my WW5 execution. This intervention erected from the first phase of introduction with Whitwar and Whitwar pop-up form. The second phase focused on repetition and Whitwar drill. The third phase is the reiteration process emphasizing on the words learned with Whitwar jumbled up. The fourth phase is the warm-up chatterbox and the fifth phase is the real-time chatterbox. I named my method WW5 because it is a five-phase word war intervention. It follows chronological orders of acquiring the second language. Word war means that every day is a battle between the students and the words. I challenge the students to conquer the words or be conquered. In the first phase, students were encouraged to use thesaurus. This was a take-home task where students were given two words daily. The words were selected from reading passages, TV programs, news and songs. They needed to find five LFW for every common word. For example, the LFW for important is essential, LFW for destroy is annihilate, and LFW for rapid growth is exponential. They then needed to construct one sentence from one of the LFWs. One example of the LFW sentence is COVID-19 cases are increasing at an exponential rate. The other form is a Whitwall pop-up form which used the same concept as the previous form. Nevertheless, it is circumscribed by the theme of the week. They would get five words a week on the different themes. The second phase was a retaining process with word war drill. There was a lot of repetition and drilling in this phase. Even though drilling is an old school method, trust me, it is unbelievably efficient in the second language learning. As Ben in 1976 said, knowledge of word can accumulate if the learners meet the words many times. This daily activity is aimed to retain the vocabulary in their memory. In retaining the vocabulary, students will do immense drilling of LFW, meanings, pronunciation and sentence construction. I helped to guide them only with the pronunciation because I believe that students develop good pronunciation habits by listening to a model from the teacher and repeating them several times which help them learn new items effortlessly. I observed that after the second phase, Students were able to pronounce the words accurately, they spelt the LFWs correctly, the confidence level were boosted, and last but not least, their voices were so much louder. The third phase was the Whitwar Jumble, which was the reiterating phase. Students were divided into groups of fours and they were given dizziness unlimited form. They needed to choose 10 LFW they had learned in the previous lesson and jumbled up the alphabets. Later, they needed to exchange the forms with the other groups. They needed to solve the jumbled up LFWs in a stipulated time. The first group to finish unjumbling the words correctly would become the winner and receive a prize. After this activity, 
I observe that the students were excited, they were competitive, they used English during discussions, they were confident to use the words and it did solidify the understanding of the words. In the fourth phase, we had the warm-up chatterbox and the fifth phase was the real-time chatterbox. A representative from each group would come to the front and took a theme card from the teacher. Once they receive a theme card, they would bring the LFW box on the theme back to the group members. In their respective groups, they would shake the three cards out from the slits at the side of the box. The warm-up chatter, they had one minute preparation time and one minute individual presentation. They would have to use all the three cards in one minute presentation. Later, they were given four minutes to discuss the topic using the cards that they had in front of them. The real-time chatterbox resembled the actual Muad speaking exam. Students were given two minutes preparation time. Later, they needed to use the three cards in two minutes individual presentation. For task two, they had 10 minutes to discuss the topics. As you can see, once they had used the cards successfully, they would put the cards in the middle of the table. At this point, I observed that the students showed little or no anxiety at all. They only showed good body gestures and eye contact when speaking to the group members. In the earlier stages, they would keep quiet if I came near their tables. But after a few rounds of chatterboxes, they gained the confidence to talk and my presence was ignored. They looked self-assured and presented the topic well to the other group members. As you can see, I had executed a control LFW acquisition. In my intervention, nevertheless, I made constant changes in terms of the group dynamics. I had my lessons in different venues. I made the students stood up and moved about. I averted stiffness and rigidity. I also lifted the energy level and enthusiasm with praises and prizes. All in all, I embedded competitiveness to create a healthy, friendly challenge. I believed that interesting activities towards facilitating vocabulary acquisition aid language learning. Now, I present you the results of before and after the intervention. The comparison between TOV Test 1 2019 and Test 1 2020. As you can see, the increment of one mark up to a tremendous 12 marks. Students were able to utilize the LFWs in the test to boost their marks. Four students' marks were unchanged because two students went for a college program for more than two weeks during the intervention, while the other two had glitches in the aspects of maturity of the content. However, their marks still stayed at band 3 and band 4. Later on, I called the four students for personal work clinics and they were given extra tasks to make sure that they are at par with the others. After Test 1 2020 in February, I gave the students a survey. Taking random answers, some said that I can speak confidently in front of people and help those who needed my help. I express myself better using a variety of words with the same meaning. I use a lot of LFW in speaking so it doesn't sound monotonous. I can apply them in my word session and communicate with my friends from other countries more competently. Evidently, the intervention helped the students to solidify the understanding of LFW, thus accelerating the confidence level. The impact of the intervention was overwhelming. The students had shown a change in their attitude. When they were less anxious during speaking lessons, they were able to use at least three to five LFW in the speech. They were able to convey the messages clearly. They were more confident to speak in a big group and they were able to attain band 3 and 4 in speaking component. In conclusion, I strongly believe there is a close relationship between acquiring and retaining low-frequency words with the ability to communicate effectively. As Wilkins in 1972 cited, while without grammar very little can be conveyed without vocabulary, nothing can be conveyed. With that, I thank you.